EU qualifier, but we are in the game. So let's introduce these two incredible players and what they will be doing. Spawning in the top right position, we have the yellow Terran player. It is from Team Millennium, Daishi. And his opponent spawning in the lower left, the red Zerg. The Chinese Zerg who is incredibly aggressive. It is Shigua. So, Jorisa, will we yep. see a super aggressive opening? Will we see Shigua macroing it up and turtling to Broodlord Infester? Or will we see something <laughs> in between? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not going to see turtling up, macroing into Broodlord Infester, because unfortunately, we might then turtle up and uh, decide to macro into Void Ray Tempest, and apparently that could be a bit of a problem. So, we, we shouldn't be seeing that this game around. Of course, it is Heart of the Swarm, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Uh, what these players can pull out of their sleeves. I'm really wondering if Shigua is going to attempt aggression yet again. A very long rush distance here on Daybreak could make that difficult for him indeed. So, I'm... I don't know, I'm not entirely convinced that uh, the aggression would work twice in a row here, but maybe Deji's expecting that, at which point we're thinking about mind games and whether Shigua thinks he can get away with it. I'm just waiting for Daishi to just mass make Widow Mines this game. Just Widow Mind rush his opponent and be like, Widow Mines, you save me game one, you can win me game two. And of course, everything I'm saying in the early stage of this game seems to be 100% sarcasm, which unfortunately means that I'll get flamed <laughs> in the Twitch chat because people won't pick up on it and be like, oh my god, what is this new Bacasta talking about? Like, no one would go mass Widow Mines. But do you remember that ESEC game where we did see mass Widow Mines? That was pretty funny. I, that was funny. I think I remember. That was a while ago, though. That wasn't a, that wasn't an iSeries. That, that was way before, right? Yeah, it was hilarious. It was brilliant. So anyway, what have we got coming down? Hatchery, Spawning Ball, Extractor for Shigua. So pretty much an identical opening to what we saw in Game 1. Daishi going to be going for a one Rax Command Center, because why mix things up? What's, what worse could happen to you going one Rax Command Center than what happened in Game 1? Well, quite. Um, so we actually have a one Rax Gasless Expand, not something you see too often in Heart of the Swarm, admittedly. Uh, so let's see what it ends up coming to. I mean, Reaper Expand is just a lot better in Heart of the Swarm because you get that constant scouting information, so it's interesting that no gas to be taken this time around. And I think Shigua will see from the timing of that command center, he'll go, hang on a second, there's actually no way you could possibly have a Reaper right now. And uh, he'll know that it's gasless, even though he hasn't seen the main base yet. So, if he has something specific prepared for this, he will show it soon. But uh, if he doesn't, I, I foresee both sides just macroing up. I think Shigua is going to be relatively happy anyway that he doesn't have to micro against Reapers in his main. Which I think is a fair thing to say. You don't want to have to worry about Reapers. They are a bit of a pain. You can deal with them relatively easily. Daishi actually going for a one rack CC CC opening. So three very early command centers. That's a lot of mules, a lot of SCVs able to be produced. And that, of course, is good news for our Terran player. But potentially bad news as well for the lovely um, Shikwa. Because if he doesn't take his third relatively quickly, he could run into some problems. He could indeed. Uh, getting that third base early, very, very risky, especially when we've seen so much early game aggression in this series so far. I don't really think either player would be comfortable just launching into that third base. Even if nothing else, like no game considerations aside, just the meta game, knowing what these guys have been up to, you, you have to be expecting aggression at all times. It's definitely not the kind of thing they go for. So going later on into this game, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a considerable number of units before either player considers expanding again. So, as we've got now, the Overlord flying in gets a good little read. I'm not quite sure if the Overlord saw everything. Didn't? No, didn't actually catch no, didn't. anything. That is really barracks. unfortunate. Got taken down, just saw that a couple more barracks were on the way, as you said, but didn't see that third command center, and that was the all-important thing to get spotted. Yeah. Uh, of course, seeing potentially seeing a third command center would mean uh, that he knows it's not some sort of all-in about to pop in. And that's, of course, very important to know as well. Uh, if you see a lot of production structures and you don't see that third command center, you might go into defensive mode very, very quickly. But uh, if this is just for potential unit production so that you can defend your expansion safely, then that's a whole different story and you feel a lot safer macroing up. We see the Overlord that would be able to see the third command center still kind of chilling out over on the left-hand side of the map here. And it's going to take him another minute, maybe a minute and a half 
before he actually gets around to seeing that. And it looks like uh, one of the observers in this game rather helpfully pointing out that there is a Zergling there, but I don't really see what he's going to be doing. Just seeing that the Hellions are moving out, dying in the process, but hey, at least you know there's some Hellions there, I guess. Now, Shigua has been so passive this game compared to King That was the Doctor Who observer, man. Like, someone just randomly clicks there and goes, hey, look, this unit is about to die. That's basically all that was. The Grim Reaper of Faith, just like... Better keep an eye on this, it's all going to be over soon. <laughs> Give Can the you imagine? Game. The Grim Reaper is actually just an observer in this game we're playing called Life. <laughs> he like, just randomly pings you and you die. For anyone wondering though, it's not actually us or our observer, it's one of the other uh, casters or observers in this game that ping that. Of course, we have no control over their actions. But, uh, who knows? So Maybe be another pinging unit. In a, so be know, pinging right? in a big lobby. Oh. Exactly. <sighs> these casters. But yeah, we've got four Hellions on their way in. Two Queens there, though, will be able to say no and force them back for the time being. Also, Overlords are still running in. As far as Shiko is aware, there is no third command center down yet. Very little scouting information out in the open. Just knows that there's a decent number of Hellions pushing across. Yo, and uh, he might be able to do a bit of damage with this. The creep spread... Uh, I want to say that Shigua has done a great job of creeps running between the bases, which is very important for moving queens uh, back and forth and stuff like that. But as far as out into the center of the map is concerned, he hasn't done the best job so far. And the Hellenes are only now at the forward watchtower, so it's not like those creep tumors have been denied for, you know, quite a long time or anything like that. Ooh, no cancel on that creep tumor. So he just hasn't been spreading the quite as much as he wanted to. And uh, I'd like to see him pick that up a little bit. Maybe the presence of the Hellions will spur him into redoubling his efforts. He may do. She got just starting up the macro hatch, also getting the Spire down, 1-1 one, one melee upgrades on their way. Compare that to Daishi, who's got 1-1 one, one pretty much at the same time as well. They're going to be very equal in upgrades this game. And arguably, that's one of the things that helped Daishi late game by having out the three two upgrades compared to just one oh i believe it was at the very end for shigua and of course upgrades play a critical part in the game the longer you have them out because they help every unit and now as we see just deshi starting to move across the map a lot of marines one marauder and a few hellions two medevacs just joining in with this one one timing push incoming jorasa will get um, will shigua be able to hold it uh and combat shield Bizarrely, just starting behind this, so uh, it's not like Daishi's going all in with this or anything. He is planning for the next phase of his attack, should this not work. Trying his best to pick apart as many of those creep tumors as possible. Might even be worth a scan, given the number of creep tumors here. There we go. And do creep tumors trigger Widow Mines? I don't know, but we're not going to find out because it actually got taken apart a little bit too quickly there. Good hit off on some of those Zerglings, but here come the rest of the units and the Banelings coming in from both sides. Banelings from the back as well. There's nowhere for the Marines to run. Really nice engagement from Shigua, but is it going to be enough? It doesn't look like it. Marines still left picking apart these Queens. A next round of Zerglings. Can this Queen survive? No, she cannot. And that is very unfortunate. Widow Mines yet again, the saving grace of Daishi, allowing him to do relatively good damage. Detection is now out there in the form of the Overseer. We also should have some Mutalists coming out on the field shortly because we do have the Spire completed. So that's what Shigon needs to spend that thousand gas on fairly soon. The 2-2 two, two upgrades also on the way for both players. Plus two, actually plus two infantry armor, not yet started though, for Daishi. Oh, there, there will we go. be no Commander Widow Mind this time around. That Overseer making sure he picks them off early. And uh, a Viking going in to clear out Overlords very nicely, although he hasn't seen the Overlord at the third base location just yet. He's actually like a single hex away from seeing it. So hopefully he'll be able to pick that off at some point soon. Another Overlord going down at the bottom to this Marine drop. Shiko actually doing a great job of spreading his Overlords to see any and all drops that might be coming from the sides of the map, leaving him with uh, the job only of uh, looking after the center. So I really like that play from our Zerg. So the first Mutalists are on their way out. We've got 10 on the field now. They are just happily flying around here, being ready, not being that harassment heavy. A single medevac flying over towards the watchtower will get spotted by everything though, but does boost through, spots the fourth base coming out from Shigua, and that is the sort of thing that you need. All right, the mood is now just going to be picking apart this drop. I think Daishi knows that it's not going to be able to do too much damage. And there goes the meta back, but simultaneously a little bit. Oh, oh my god, these Widow Mines potential to do a lot of damage here, but seeing them with the Overseer just long enough, 
and uh, while we get a decent hit off, not the most amazing, and with these mutants as well, Daishi is going to have to move back. Shigua looking in a decent position this game. He's currently has a supply lead of about 40. He's going to be very pleased with that. He sees the two Widow Mines there, decides to go elsewhere. Very close to being within range, but the Zerglings will be able to pick that apart. So, what do we do now moving forward? Well, you have to start thinking about what Shigua is going to do. He's been quite passive so far this game. He's only managed to kill two workers, but then again, Daishi has only killed, well, hasn't actually killed any. Zero. Plus one, Flyer Weapons is now done for the Zerg player. More Widow Mines on the way out, and importantly, Hive is nearly complete. The normal tech switch is into Ultralisks. That is really one of the most effective ways to go into this, but it's quite late for that now, so we'll be interested to see what's going to be going on. Daishi, though, with his fourth base up and running, probably going to try and take his... Um, uh, third base up and running, probably going to try and take his fourth in the third location shortly, once he yep. clears out that Overlord. That makes sense. He still actually hasn't seen that Overlord there, believe it or not, as a couple of Zerglings now in the mineral line, but will get cleaned up by some bio units. The Mutas seeing if they can get any damage done in the main, but Daishi putting up a lot of turrets here, so uh, that's not going to be possible anytime soon. And uh, I'm really surprised because Daishi hasn't even attempted to scout out this normal third base location so far. We actually have some Banelings coming in as well, so I wonder if he can sneak into the mineral line as we have a huge engagement coming out here in the middle of the map battles. Yes, the Widow Mines are burrowing just in time. They don't actually have the Drilling Claws upgrade, which with how, uh, with just how many days she's getting of them, I really think... Here come think the Banelings into the natural. Yeah, the Banelings, they are getting really, really close, actually. This is... Oh, uh, this is... Wait, what? Going down on an orbital command. What? Why? Why? Why, why Shigua? Why? Why? Oh, dear, oh, dear. That was so close to being so amazing. Look at how many SCVs are currently in the red of the natural, and now Daishi is pushing forward. The number of workers killed in this game is 13 from Shigua, but it could easily have been 30. A little bit of Miss Micro there on those Banelings is all it took, and it looks like he's going for round two. He noticed that Daishi didn't scout that position out, so hey, why not go at it again? Yeah, why not just keep going? Of course, that was Chico's approach in game one. A couple of SCBs <laughs> getting killed here at game four. Meanwhile, we've got Morlings coming into the natural, doing a nice amount of work there. Meanwhile, big engagement. Jurasa just outside the fourth base of Shikwa, and we can see a good number of Marines here. Drilling Claws finally getting researched. Banelings, are they going to roll in? No, they're pulling back. Daishi needs to try and move the Widow Mines forward slowly, but it's taking quite a while for them to unburrow and reburrow. We have a couple of bio units now. There's nothing much he can do. He's actually checked up the Broodlords behind this, and there's a lot of Banelings morphed in. He needs to rush those Banelings through with the Broodlords, because look at this. The Medivacs cannot actually keep up with the amount that Daishi is stimming. They're all at about half health, and here come the Banelings. Great connects there with a lot of the Marines, and the Speedling follow should be enough to take this apart. The Broodlords as well ensure that the Grand Army is going to get taken out now. That forward base has been depleted here, but simultaneously, Number of workers killed only up to 15 from Shigua. While he was busy defending that, he didn't micro the Zerglings that went into the natural. If he just stayed in the natural with those, he could have killed about 10 or 20 SCVs. Instead, they got drawn back out to the uh, forward base location, the third, where basically a bunker picked most of them up. So a little bit of a shame. Now we have a couple of, wi of Marauders dropping down to this top fourth base of Shigua. If he takes this out, it would be good, but Mutalists are reacting fairly quickly and there isn't any uh, marines there in order to deal with that so that's a bit of a problem ultralists are on the way out onto the field there's already those four broodlords so really all the tier three tech coming out <coughs> from the zerg player meanwhile we have got the fourth base getting secured by daishi after taking out the overlord also building more command centers because that's what you do late game and is there a widow mine sitting there there is indeed as all right so they're down everywhere so I don't know, again, I have no idea who's pinging, but because they've been pinging before, I expect that Widow Mine to momentarily die, because that seems to be how it is. Uh, so we'll see if that ends up happening. I'm pretty sure that one Widow Mine isn't going to make the difference in this game, unless... Oh, pardon me. Yep, look, there we go. The next unit in the game to die was that Widow Mine. Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper caster, pinging away. That's like worse than a caster curse. It's just like you're highlighting what you choose to be the next dead unit. Clearly a Zelnaga target, a uh, Zelnaga um, caster, just sitting there, just being like, you shall die next. But yes, we've got, we've got more units slowly amassing. Where are the Broodlords? That's the thing I really want to know. They're just, uh, they're they're casually... with the in the center, I yeah, think. Yeah, they're just happily moving over. They do get scouted, though. The Ultralists, obviously, out on the field as well. Upgrade-wise, 3-3, three, three, up against 3-3. Three, three. Drilling Claws is done. The Kiteness Plating, Adrenal Glands. This is really as late game as you get, but the Broodlords are completely exposed, and the Vikings are going to town. 
Yeah, every single Brutal is going to go down here, but the Ultralist tech transition has already been made. He's now rolling in to the third base location. There's a lot of Widow Mines here. I'm not sure this is going to work out too well. Widow Mines being triggered, and it looks like Shigua is being pushed back. I wonder if Shigua has left it a little bit too late, because Deishi has been able to regroup here. His upgrades are great at 3-3, and he's actually taking a supply lead right now. He's at 192 to 163 for Shigua, despite being only on three base for such a long time in this game. He's got his fourth up now, and the fifth command center is down too. Imagine if Shigua could deny, oh, and just as I'm talking about it, deny this potential third base location for much longer. He needs to control these speedlings much better. He's currently attacking command center when he could be killing off drones, uh, SCVs rather, and there we go. Decent number of links killing off SCVs. That's exactly what we needed. Ultras in the middle of the map, chomping through these bio units. Like Bailings, they also just want hugs. And it looks like they're going to get quite a few of them there as most of this army get cleaned up. Deji is dropping at the 5th post location. Meanwhile, Shigua has completely decimated the mineral line at the 4th of Deji. This game is getting very, very harassment heavy. Drops coming down everywhere. Drops in the main. Drops in the 4th. And meanwhile, Shigua is just running Zerglings in everywhere. This is completely <coughs> localized attacking. Multi-prong to the max. A couple of investors out on the field as well are going to really help. And we've even got drop tech being researched by Shigua at the moment. Oh, if we see Ultralist drops, then I think my day would actually be complete. That would be unbelievably amazing right now. Both sides, it's basically a boxing match at the moment. Deishi once again at a slightly higher supply than Shigua. I'm not sure what he's doing with these three Ultralists out in the middle of the map. Again, they're just looking for a couple of hugs, but they're really not going to find them here as this bio army takes them apart. Maybe a little bit of a miss rally point. He, he's just constantly streaming in with a couple of Zerglings and one or two Ultras. It's just not enough at this point. Shigua needs to go back, needs to regroup, and instead he's throwing away more units. He doesn't have a bank. He cannot afford to do this. No, he cannot afford to do this. You're exactly right. More Zerglings are still coming in, though. But as we see, Widow Mines being strategically placed in run-through paths, just trying to knock them out as they come through. Of course, you can run straight over and get away with it. But the problem being that if they stop anywhere, such as with buildings in the way, the Widow Mines will detonate on Speedlings. An Ultra is omnoming its way through the fourth base here, just killing a couple of units and then will turn tail and run away. But Daishi with a pretty astronomical lead here, 179 supply to just 124. There was a point in this game where Shigua was 30, maybe 40 supply ahead of Daishi, but I feel that in those positions you need to consolidate and really punch through with a huge army and what Shigua has been doing since he had that advantage was trickle in with units and you cannot do that against a decent bio army especially with medevacs in tow because when your units die their numbers don't actually get depleted and the infestors moving way too far forward a little bit of miss micro there and two infestors even though they get a fungal growth down do get taken out early a widow mine shot coming down now as well and look at these vikings they're looking very embarrassed right now because there are no Rude Lords, but that doesn't actually matter at this point. He's picking apart Shigua a couple of units at a time. Shigua is not engaging with his whole army at once, and that's going to be enough.